Hi, this is Scott Picaric with Verde Property Management with today's landlord tip. And this one I think is probably a little bit more than just a landlord tip. Uh, so with me today to help uh, with this topic is Nick Ludwig with uh, Dolliff Insurance. That's correct. And uh, what do you do there, Nick? I'm an uh, agent broker and uh, sell insurance and uh, obviously give advice and counsel to customers and clients. Awesome. So we're going to talk about umbrella policies and how do they fit into your overall insurance strategy. We yes. assume you have one. If you don't, talk to Nick. Yes. But, uh, you know, I know enough about umbrella policies to be dangerous. Right. Um, I know I have them. Yes. But how do they, for the layperson, how do they work with... Uh, with your regular hazard policy? Because you have some liability insurance that is right. included in, in your property policy, right? In right. most cases, I assume, right? Yes, you should. Absolutely, right. So, see, I've got three duplexes in Minneapolis. Right. And I want to, I'm thinking, oh, man, maybe I'm, I've got some exposure here. I'm thinking about getting an umbrella policy. How does that work? What's the process? Right. So an umbrella policy is a uh, the, the the name gives you a little hint as to what kind of a policy it is, right? Because it offers protection, but it usually offers protection over and above. That's what it is designed to do. Your standard or your your primary insurance umbrella policies are are really cost effective and they're really useful tools. I always say that umbrellas are probably the you get the most bang for your buck. Uh, of, of any insurance policy, po policy, practically any insurance policy. And the reason why is, is because they give you additional liability protection, usually sold in units of a million bucks a piece. And you can buy a million dollar umbrella or you could buy a $10 million. And I've had some policies that uh, in total, not with all with one carrier, but layering together a hundred million dollars of umbrella insurance, right? For wow. a big customer, and and so why why do you buy it? Well, because you have a so you have a duplex or a piece of property, and you may have a million dollar primary liability uh, uh, coverage under that policy. Sometimes maybe not even that, right? If you're a smaller, you may buy a three hundred thousand dollar policy or a half a million dollar policy, and so. If in fact you have a serious claim, it, you can exhaust three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand or even a million dollars of insurance pretty quickly. We we see now it's very typical, and there's studies and there's statistics on this that that uh, million dollar plus or over million dollar liability claims, injury claims are becoming quite common, very common nowadays, and and it's uh, not uncommon to see. Um, claims of, uh, you know, big injuries or, or multiple people injuries that are several million dollars. Yeah. So how do, I mean, what are you really covering when you say liability? I mean, is there yeah, kind of standard things that are covered or yes. are there exclusions? To of it? course there's exclusions, but the basics are what, what it's designed to do is cover third parties, injury or damage to third parties. Okay. Right? So personal injury kind personal of thing. Personal injury, right. Bodily injury, they get hurt or... Or your, your negligence or something that you do or don't do causes uh, significant damage, right? The, the thing that most people experience, most consumers of insurance, most people, they might have a car accident sometime in their life, right? And, and God forbid, but maybe somebody is injured, right? And so auto liability insurance in that case is the, is, is the kind of coverage that would respond to, you, you know, you cause an accident or it's your fault and you injure somebody, right, or cause okay. them, them damage. Now, unless they're driving a Rolls Royce or a Maserati or something really, really, really expensive, or it could be even a multiple cars, usually the property damage isn't that big of a deal, right? You know, it might be several thousand dollars, but it's not that much. But the injuries can be, you know, very severe, and they can and they could be many people, long-lasting injuries, permanent injuries, and so having a million dollars or more of injury is, is not, not uncommon. And so umbrella policies cover, so this is a good way to, to kind of explain this, is that umbrella policies go over and above your, your primary liability coverage. Could be liability coverage on a building or a piece of property, home. Could also be auto. Could also be other types of policies. So umbrella policies, that's the other reason they're called umbrellas, is that they can cover 
over and above more than one under. So they stack policy. on multiple. multiple that's right. They can they can stack stack on top of multiple policies, right? And that's why they become they can be cost effective too. Because when you, they, when you say cost effective, how how do they normally price? I'm not saying a specific dollar amount, but how, yeah. what do they take into account when they price it? Yeah, they take into account what are the underlying, you know, what are the uh, what are the risks that we are covering over? So they look at the they look at what policies they're going over, right? The insurance company will look at that. Okay, how many vehicles? How many pieces of property? How big they are? You know, if you got maybe apartment building, how many units? They look right? at claim history. They do look at claim history, of course. But credit. They, they do look at credit as okay. well, right? And they look at all the same kind of things. But you remember, they're they're counting on the customer to have, and they and they rely on that that you actually have underlying pieces of coverage you already have policies there right so what the umbrella is is that the umbrella only kicks in once it becomes major once it once, once you've it exhausted exhausts. yeah the primary so policies. i got a hundred thousand in liability on my car uh my rate's probably going to be higher than the guy who's got five hundred thousand dollars of liability on his auto insurance right if i want to add another million on, yeah I well mean, I, and, and, then, I, and i'm saying all things being equal i mean it's that's so right all things being equal. Right? And, and, like, and, and and of course the other thing that enters in is that you sometimes you can't get umbrella uh, policies to cover if you have too low primary limits. Uh, okay. They'll say, "Well, you got to bump those up before we put an umbrella on this." Okay. Right? And so, so you'll see that too. But it it it, it depends on the insurance company. It depends on the type of coverage. You'll see, um, for homes, right, and homes and autos for somebody that, that's just got their own residence. And uh, they may get an umbrella uh, really inexpensively, a couple hundred bucks or something for a million of coverage over and above, say, uh, you know, a $300,000 or $500,000 limit. Uh, on a Is it more limit. expensive for a landlord, an investor, to get coverage on rental property versus their primary it, it, residence? Well, obviously, it depends it on how be, big. It yeah. can be. Yeah, obviously, this, the bigger the property and the more units and the more square footage and all that stuff, yeah. right? All that enters in. but. But they're paying more usually than a homeowner for their for their uh, property insurance anyway on a on a commercial building or a, or or, right. or a multifamily building. So, but, but the get point the is rich is, landlord sock them right. Yeah, but yeah, it, but, yeah. but the nice thing about it is that I'm being it, sarcastic. It, 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 it is it is, you know, yes, it costs something. It's there's some premium charge, but it isn't. It's it's a it's a lot of coverage for a million bucks or right. more of, of, of coverage, you know, or, or a lot of, yeah, for, uh, uh, and so your premiums, I don't know, you know, it can be a thousand bucks or it could be more. And as we're doing really, this, I'm thinking about my coverage and thinking, do I have enough? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, well, and, <laughs> and I get that question all the time. You know, that's a, so much of a, uh, one of the more common questions I get asked is that, so you finally get to the point where you're talking to a customer and you're saying, well, yes, I agree. I think I need some umbrella insurance. I need more liability limits. How much should I buy? And then, uh, and then, of course, I say, well, I think you should buy as much as you can afford. I think right. you should buy all of it. You never know. But, but in in reality, of course, that that's not that doesn't happen. People go, well, look at I don't I don't want to I don't think I need to buy a hundred million of coverage, but how much should I buy? So there. So let me give you a couple just really quick since we're on this because I, I I hear it so often. I have a couple rules of thumb that I that I. I suggest that people think about. Okay. And that is is that there's there's two rules of thumb. One of them is the walk away, right? In other words, okay, if I get sued for a bazillion dollars or whatever it happens to be, at what point do I just walk away from this property? Yeah, so here's the keys. Have fun with that, that's right? That's right, right. And so... I'm not saying that's the strategy you should take, but it's, it's on the table. Well, right. And and again, that, that it, it does come to that at some point, right? Yep. And particularly if it like, look, look, this property is only worth to me. Uh, my my equity in it is only this much. So that might be. Well, a look way. at 2008 to 2012, right. 13. There you go. Uh, I walked in a lot of houses that looked like so, like people had sat down for dinner, had a conversation, finished their meal and left. Walk out. Yeah, because they, they found themselves in a position where it was just not possible to continue. Right. And that wasn't an insurance claim per se, but it was a situation where at that, some point, there, there, yeah, at some point there's a walk away number. Right. So there. So the, another way of saying the same thing is saying, well, okay, what what's my net worth or what's the net worth of this particular entity or this particular property? And, and, and then you say, well, I'm not going to buy any more insurance than really the, the cover that, right? right. So I, I want to, if I, if I get sued and I get it's bad enough, I want to hang in there and I want to defend myself and I want to be able to pay a claim uh, is to protect my equity 
to, to some point, right? And other people have other reasons, that, or they may, again, they have loans, they have mortgages, and, and there may be other reasons where they want to hold on to their property even beyond their net worth, right? right. So then I say, well, here's another rule of thumb, just the value of the total asset, right? And, and now that gets more expensive, right? Because if you're, because the asset could be much more, the value of that asset could be much more than your actual equity or net worth. Right. It, right? But you might say, I, I want to protect this because I want to hold on to it. I'm building for the future. I'm building for the long term. And so you say, look, and I'm, I want to, I want to have enough umbrella insurance to cover me so that I feel like I can, I can hang on to the, to these assets. It's a lot like life insurance. Yeah. Term life, particularly, because term life is generally very inexpensive. Yep. And many people choose not to carry it. Yes. And it's one of those things, well, you don't need it until you need it. and Or do you ever, do you, you don't need it till you want it. And that's usually when you have a situation sure. where it would be really nice to have. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of the umbrella policy. I think for the, for the relative cost there's a great value yes. there there's peace of mind check the exclusions make sure that you know you're you're you know what you're getting and then uh you know i look at it as i look at uh term life insurance i have a fair amount of term life insurance sure and i will tell you after the catastrophe or the incident happens is not the time to start looking that's right you do it when the sun is shining and the, and the clouds are <laughs> and the sky is blue and the clouds are are you rolling on by? Yeah, it's a life insurance. When you're young and healthy, buy it then. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so if someone wants to learn more about umbrella insurance policies, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, my phone number is 952 593 7410. My email address is nludwig, that's L U D W I G, at dolliff.com. Dolliff is spelled D O L L I F F. And that phone number again, Nick? 952 952- Five nine three seven four one zero. Awesome. So thanks so much. This is thanks. Nick Ludwig with Dolliff Insurance. I'm Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, call or text 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. Verde dash, it's a little dash, little dash button, uh, Real Estate. Dot com. We hope this content has been valuable, and like always, if there's any way we could be of further service, please let us know. Thank you.